Transmission lines can carry way more power during winter. Towers collapsing can cause lines to snap, but snapped lines can also cause towers to collapse. This is a female tower, and this is a male tower. All of that and more in this video. Transmission lines power transfer limits are determined by how fast can you cool off the conductors. Current passing through the conductors will produce power losses in the form of heat. The factors that influence power transfer limits are ambient temperature, wind, and also solar irradiance. These all affect sag, but nobody's interested in sagginess. The best condition for power transfer would be like winter at night, lots of wind, maybe even rain, but rain without the lightning. Yeah, that's important. On the other hand, the worst conditions for power transfer would be in summer, in the middle of the day, and no wind. The power transfer limits for these two scenarios are like very different levels. That is why countries with seasonal weather have different operating limits during different times of the year. Of course, of course, you can be conservative and implement a summer standard for winter as well. And then you would ask your government for more money to build more lines so you have a bigger asset base and collect more tariff. Most four season regions would actually employ a different line rating standard for different times of the year to better optimize the asset. Then we have these equator region people like India where it's just hot all year round. There isn't much room for additional power transfer for different times of the year. But for example, in Thailand where highest energy demand is at night, the temperature is much cooler at night and allows for more power transfer too. This is efficiency at its max. High power transfer during winter is nice because more people use electricity for heating. But when it comes to hot summer, the power transfer limits are severely shrunk. Also, during winter, you do need the high power transfer. High current passing through the conductors will prevent ice forming on the cables. If the current is not high enough, operators may even reduce voltage to increase the current so that there is more heat generated to melt the ice. Why are they so afraid of ice? Ice will add weight to the conductors and also shrink the metal. This may cause towers to collapse. Towers collapsing will cause lines to snap, but line snapping will also cause towers to collapse. It's like a chicken and egg situation. Yes, you heard it right. Line snapping will cause towers to collapse. This is due to the tension associated with the towers and are actually being resolved by the lines, being pulled by the left side and right side and make it balance it out. If a line breaks, basically one side stops pulling. The tension breaks and the tower experiences uneven tension. This may cause towers to twist or bend over. Speaking of bending over, like these are female towers and then these are male towers. They are female towers because this is called a skirt. Also because the length of the skirt has a strong correlation to the resistance of the individual. Okay, okay, okay. Before I get cancelled, I mean the lightning resistance is calculated differently when the skirt of different length is involved okay that's what i meant okay not trying to get cancelled here and on the other hand this is a male tower other than the fact that it does not wear a skirt the male tower can be identified by its huge rod it is a huge and powerful rod that provides support for the entire body above it the cylindrical shape stabs into the soft and supple designated area beneath it. This rod also has some nuts attached to it. I should stop here before I get cancelled. You're watching the Funsi channel. Doo, doo, 